Hello, this is Daniel King reporting on round four of the London Chess Classic. I'm back up now after another long day at uh, the chess in Olympia. I've been really impressed by the players' fighting spirit so far in the tournament, and we had some more very long games today. Let me just take you through the results very, very quickly. We had draws between Nakamura and Adams, although you know, Nakamura kept pressing the whole way, but Nicky probably was never in real trouble. Anand and Kramnik drew. Well, this was a game full of respect, actually. Both players had chances to upset the balance of the position, but neither wanted to risk too much, and the game ended in a draw. Magnus Carlsen defeated Garwain Jones. Well, that was actually a very interesting game. Jones played very bravely, even sacrificing his queen at some moment for positional compensation. But actually, Carlsen always had it under control, and in the end, his victory was fairly easy. But the game that I'd like to concentrate on in my play of the day is Luke McShane against Levon Aronian. Now, these two players, whenever they play, always produce some extraordinary positions. Uh, in last year's London Chess Classic, they had a wild draw. In the Tal Memorial earlier this year, they had um, a really complicated game that Luke won with the black pieces. And today's game was no less exciting and no less wild. Uh, we pick up the game after 21 moves, and it was a Spanish. Things have gone very well for Levon Aronian, and here he struck upon a, a really, well, a very nice tactic actually, which I think Luke probably by this stage couldn't avoid. Pawn to e4. Well, this really has to be taken. Aronian exchanged knight for bishop, and now the point is that the support for this knight has now gone and this sets up a nasty pin. If the queen retreats, let's say to c2, well I think this position is absolutely hopeless. Black has two bishops against rook and pawn, but I think the point is that black has a very stable position, so this is simply winning for black. So Luke decided to sacrifice his queen. Well, he gets a rook and a knight and a pawn for the queen and has a fairly stable position. Sometimes you can create a fortress, but actually Aronian has also good coordination and the queen was able to penetrate. And this is simply very, very good for black and it looked to all of us watching as though Aronian was going to clean up very quickly. C4 is a very nice move, making room for the bishop to come to this diagonal so that the queen and bishop can target f2. Luke tried a counter-attack, but it all seemed in vain. Um, there are just too many weaknesses. You can see that black can target f2, black can target c3, black can target a5, and this is just too much for white to take care of. But here something really bizarre happened, actually. The most obvious and natural and strong move for black in this position is just to play f6. To drive the knight away, so the knight goes back to g4, let's say. Excuse me, let me just have a quick slurp of tea. And let's see the queen comes into c2, so it's targeting these these pawns and you know maybe there's the idea to play rook d1 as well okay let's see h4 h5 well if the knight comes back here well you can see how black is invading very very easily you're just going to pick off the seaboard this this is such a simple way to play or knight here we take this one and well black is just going to win this position you know no real complications um, but instead here, Aronian, he was playing so quickly, he had a brainstorm, he just played rook d6. After the game I asked Levon, you know, why didn't you play f6? And he said, I don't know. He said, I just don't know. 
you know, he, he sort of said something, well, I, I, I thought that White's position was just going to collapse here. Basically, he's allowed McShane to take on F7, and I, he, he must have thought that he was just simplifying the position and was just going to take the pawn on c3. Well, this is what happened, and I think he thought by simplifying the position, this is the easiest way to win. Um, he's just going to queen this pawn. Well, this happened, but too many pawns got taken on the other side of the board. I'm surprised that he didn't just, for example, defend this pawn here. But no, he was he was kind of on tilt, as they say. You know, he, he was just playing quickly, and he must have thought that uh, Luke was going to resign this position because you know this pawn is just coming through. But look. Black's kingside has just been demolished here, and although um, this c pawn is going to go through, things are not so simple. Let me show you one typical variation. Here, the pawn can go through. Well, at least White has to give up a piece for it, but it's quite clear that in this position, White has a complete fortress. Um, you're never going to get past that rook. Um, yeah, should be a draw. Certainly, black has zero winning chances. Okay, so Aronian played bishop e7, and in this way managed to take the piece. So, again, we have queen against rook, but this way. Aronin has more winning chances because he has the bishop against the knight. And and they'd reach move 40. Luke McShane, as usual, in enormous time pressure. Um, but they reach the time control, and suddenly this position is not so clear because everything is defended. Now, I haven't got time to go through all the moves, but basically they reach this position where... Aronian managed to take the A pawn, so that's something. But in the meantime, McShane has managed to move his forces gradually up the board. Everything is protected. So, you know, now it's sort of down to a race. It's also down to how safe the king is, uh, because Aronian's managed to get round the back. Well, I think that was inevitable if the pawns are going to be pushed. So, okay, let's see what happened from here. Um, you can't really push the h pawn because then the queen comes in to check, and you know, that's that. Uh, so Luke pushed the e pawn. Okay, the a pawn goes forward. E6. So White is first with the e pawn, so this has to be covered by the bishop. In fact, Aronian had started to calculate a lot and was spending much, uh, well, yeah, much more time here. Okay, McShane pushed on. Now you could possibly play king d7 here, but Aronian had found a very nice continuation. So take care, there's a threat to push this pawn all the way down the board. So instead of pushing with a3, now that really would be dangerous, Aronian found this excellent move, queen c5. The point is this, I mean this is actually quite a key position. Aronian really had to calculate a great deal. Point is, if white pushes that pawn, then we can simplify. And this is a winning ending because you have to be careful here. Now, don't push the pawn too quickly because then the king will come around to support the g pawn. But if black plays king f8 and then king g8 to prevent the king coming here, then the pawn goes through and black wins. So let me go back. So this is a key position of, of the queen c5. What else does white have? Well, for example, uh, knight f5, and then maybe push the g pawn. Could be possible, but queen c4 is an excellent idea with this double attack. So let's just go back. There are some other alternatives, but okay, let's, let's rattle on. So McShane found a tricky move king h5. The point being that now if Aronian goes for the king pawn ending this is not winning because after a3 you can see that the king has come round so, so that king f8 
will be met by king h7 and then pawn goes through so this will be fine so queen takes isn't possible here but Aronian had worked this out he played a3 okay king h6 a2 looks absolutely desperate for white but Luke found a way to continue okay he's now he pushes the g-pawn it looks too late but if a1 then g7 is still rather problematic but again Aronian found an excellent move queen to c4 so clearly this prevents the g-pawn advancing because we have queen takes rook followed by queen um, and yeah that, that just makes life really difficult to add add to that that the h-pawn can sometimes be taken but McShane kept finding ways to play on knight f5 okay Aroni made a queen so we had two queens on the board but Luke was still fighting hard rook f8 check now king d7 is possible but Aronian played king c7 best move he'd done some nifty calculation here okay Luke pushed on with g7 still looks very tricky g8 threatened the knight covers so many good squares but this is what Aronian had calculated queen check this is a pr precise play from black and now queen takes f3 so this allows McShane to queen but now it's forced mate very tricky. Queen check, because it's only one move. And now queen b1, only move to win, but good enough. If the king comes here, we check, and that's the end of that. Alternatively, we, there is more to calculate. Rook f7 check. If the king comes here, and you try to queen again, this still isn't working. And again, queen b1 is the move. If the king goes in the corner, this is the end, and that's that. And if the king comes here, we check, and now there's a very neat way to check. This looks like some crazy study, but it's forced mate. Fantastic. So Aronian had calculated this all out. There's, this is not guesswork. So, but still. Luke found a way to play on. He underpromoted to a knight. I mean, this is just fantastic. We couldn't believe this when we were watching it. That he kept finding ways to play on. It seems this is winning, though. Um, the knights really are too static now, and now Aronian creeps in. Let's see this queen takes and. There are, there are other ways to play, but I mean, this, this is very nice. Just pinning, and it's actually impossible. Really, White finds himself in a kind of Zugzwang in this position. So, check. Slowly, the Queen's come in, and actually, Luke, uh, well, very graciously, I think, uh, allowed himself to be checkmated in one move here. Queen c8, and that was mate. A remarkable game, um, rather carelessly played by Aronian at, at some point, and he had to work so hard to win. So the scores at the moment, Carlson in the lead with three and a half out of four. Uh, well, they're using the three points for a win, one for a draw, but okay, three and a half out of four. Let's just go with that. Kramnik, three out of four. Adams with two and a half out of three, sitting well. Nakamura, two out of four. Tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, is a rest day, but more chess on Thursday where there will be round five. Thanks very much for watching.